planning board meeting. Uh, the first order of business is minutes of the previous meeting. Any corrections or additions? If not, may I have a move to accept, please? Move to accept the minutes of the last meeting. Second. Second. All in favor? So moved. Um, we had one piece of correspondence that came in Thank today, um, an email regarding beds and breakfasts from Rita Yarnold. And that was all for, for um, correspondence. Old business, the Perputa Club site plan amendment. The Perputa Club is requesting a site plan amendment for the expansion, renovation of the clubhouse and parking lot located at 300 Spurwink Avenue, section 19-9, site plan and public hearing. You want to come forward and introduce yourself, John, and tell us about any changes. My name is John Mitchell, Mitchell Associates, and I represent Porter Club. Um, generally, the, the project uh, consists of the renovation of the existing clubhouse, a small addition off the westerly uh, side of the, the clubhouse consisting of 1,250 square feet. <coughs> Uh, reconfiguration of the parking lot and some utility work. Uh, really, there hasn't been uh, very many changes to the plans uh, since the completeness meeting. Um, I will I will list the uh, the changes that have been made. Uh, we have, as recommended uh, by the fire chief, we've uh, in, we shown an eight inch water line coming in from Spruick Avenue uh, to the building uh, with a fire hydrant as he requested. The uh, lighting, we've uh, submitted additional light fixture catalog cuts uh, for building mounted fixtures. Uh, there will be a number of uh, sconces uh, on, the, on the building. Uh, and there are two parking lot light fixtures that we have um, that we have in the parking lot. Um, other than that, there, there just there were some minor notes and details that were added as a result of uh, Steve Harding's comments. Um, we did uh, Marine. One of Marine's comments was uh, to see if we could add additional landscaping within the parking lot, and we have done that. Uh, is shown on sheet three of your packet. Um, we've added a number of trees um, within the islands of the parking lot. But that, that is the extent of the changes that have been made to the plans. Thank you. Um, before we ask any questions, why don't we have a public hearing? Okay, well, public hearing. If there's anybody who would like to speak about this, please come to the podium. Well, well it's the public hearing. <laughs> hey, John, you want to come back in case anybody has any, any questions for you? Anybody have any questions? John, how many parking spaces in total? 173 total. And Maureen, what's the requirement? I just want to voice a public concern with regard to parking, particularly overflow parking, to the extent that there are events that are held there. Um, but since you're within the requirement, no objection. Don't you park across the street when there's something being held? You don't use that lot across the street for no. parking? No, we don't. Okay. Well, you do meet code, so. No. We, we have added a significant amount of parking spaces in addition to redesigning the parking lot so that it conforms to the town standards we've added um, there are 121 existing paved spaces we now have 173. Uh, what, what's the landscaping on the islands on sheet three you'll note <coughs> we added uh, from from the previous submission package we've added uh, a number of trees located in this island. Okay. Uh, three 
flowering trees in this island, uh, one here, one here, and one there. And then in the center, is that just, uh, is that asphalt just with lines on that it? That is. Okay. That, that will be pa uh, painted stripes. Right. Anybody else? A motion to consider? I'd like to move that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Percuta Club for 1,250 foot square foot expansion of the clubhouse and reconfiguration of the parking lot located at 300 Spurwick Avenue be approved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a question. Oh, do sorry. we have to recite findings of fact prior to that? Yes. yes. It, I would recommend that the board use some findings of fact yes. to bolster the decision. Thank you. <laughs> Try to go away a little easy there. Um, <clears throat> based upon the findings of fact, the Perputa Club is proposing a 1,250 square foot addition to the clubhouse and parking lot reconfiguration located at 300 Spurwink Avenue, which requires review under Section 19-9 Site Plan Regulations, and the application substantially complies with Section 19-9 Site Plan Regulations. Therefore, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Perputa Club for a 1,250 square foot expansion of the clubhouse and reconfiguration of the parking lot located at 300 Spurwink Avenue be approved. We have a second? Second. Any discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? This should be very nice. It's <clears throat> very good. So much for 730. I was thinking about that. And then, of course, there's always that notation at the bottom that says maybe even earlier or later. This is just for convenience. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the next item of business is the bed and breakfast zoning amendments. The planning board will consider amendments to the zoning ordinance that will make beds and breakfasts a permitted use on lots with frontage on Route 77 and Shore Road, Section 19-10-3, amendments to the zoning ordinance public hearing, uh, zoning ordinance and public hearing. Um, what I'd like to start with for the people, the few people that are here, as well as anybody who might be listening, are what the, the process is that we will, we have come up with a set of proposals for the town council to consider. We will have the public hearing tonight. We'll make any adjustments to um, the recommendations based on what we hear in our discussion. And then if we decide that we're finished, we will then forward the recommendations on to the town council. They will again consider them. They will have another public hearing. And it, it's a fairly lengthy process that they will then go through. But this will end our portion if we approve this, the recommendations as we have them or as we amend them tonight. This will complete our part of the process. I would like to, unless somebody else would like to go through the recommendations, would anybody else like to do it? No? Okay. All right. I would like to briefly tell everybody what they are, both the people here and the people who are watching at home. We have recommended several things. The first thing we've recommended is a definition of something called homestay. Homestay is already included in the zoning code, but we have changed the definition somewhat. We're recommending a change. And I'd like to read that to you. A homestay, a use that is accessory, accessory and incidental to the primary use of a dwelling as a residence in that one provides one or two furnished bedrooms for rent to guests for one or more nights. Two, is operated by the family or person residing permanently in the home. Three, may serve one or more meals to guests only. And four, provides all parking on site. 
a maximum of one homestay is allowed for multi-family multi building. Homestays, in terms of what we are proposing, would not require a site plan review. Now, we're also proposing bed and breakfast, and that is quite a bit more restrictive. Bed and breakfast, a use that must be operated in conjunction with the use of a dwelling as a primary residence, and that one provides up to nine furnished bedrooms for rent to guests having a length of stay not to exceed 14 consecutive days. Two, is operated by the family or person residing permanently in the home, and three, may serve one or more meals to guests only. Now, we go on from there. Um, the homestay is finished. As, uh, if, you, if we approve the homestay and it goes on to the town council, that's the end of the requirements for homestay. You have to have parking and the definition as it stands. However, bed and breakfast is, is quite a bit different. In the RA zone, which is the zone in Cape Elizabeth, where you have to have a minimum of 80,000 square feet, we are proposing, we're proposing for both the RA and the RC zone that the properties must be located either on Route 77 or on Shore Road, period. That's it. So if you're next door in the next door lot, you're out of luck. But if you are fronting on Route 77 in the RA or the RC zone, then you meet that part of the requirement. In the RA zone, which is land, which requires that a residence have 80,000 or more square feet, we are saying that the homestay is an accessory use. In all cases, it's going to require site plan review. So that means if somebody wants to open a bed and breakfast, they have to come in front of us. Um, it is uh, the bed and breakfast, in the bed and breakfast in the RA zone, the operator of the bed and breakfast must own the structure and maintain it as their primary residence. That means that they're going to have to live and operate the bed and breakfast. They would be allowed to have, based on our proposal, and that's all it is right now, one room per 20,000 square feet of gross lot area. That means if they had an 80,000 square foot lot, the maximum number of rooms they could have for rent would be four. Even though in the definition, they can go up to nine, the lot would restrict them to no more than four. And they must have at least 125 feet of frontage on Ocean House, which is Route 77 or Shore Road. In the RC district, which is the de densely developed part of Cape Elizabeth that allows homes at 20,000 square feet, on 20,000 square foot lots, Again, the homestay is an accessory use, must have a site plan review. And the definition, the bed and breakfast has the same definition that it will, uh, the operator of the bed and breakfast must own the structure and maintain it as a primary residence. In this case, by our proposal, you, the, the owner of that property, if they wanted to turn it into a bed and breakfast, would be allowed to have one rental room per 5,000 square feet of gross lot area. So let's say they had a 25,000 square foot lot. They could have five guest rooms in the house. And they must have 100 feet of frontage on Ocean House, Route 77, or Shore Road. The other requirement is for both homestay and beds and breakfasts, parking requirements. Parking requirements would be that there would be two spaces for the home, plus one space per employee, plus one space per rental room. So if you had four rooms to rent, you'd have to have, and no employees, you'd have to have at least the area for six parking spaces on your land. 
So there are restrictions built in here in terms of who can and who cannot have beds and breakfast. I think I've covered it all. Does anybody have anything they want to add? Maureen, did I miss anything? Okay. All right. That being said, um, we will um, open a public hearing and then we'll have some discussion. If you want to speak to this, please come to the podium, state your name, and say anything you'd like to say about it and your address. Good evening. I'm Diane Dusone. I reside at 19 Crescent View Avenue, and I have lived there for 35 years, plus Bowery Beach Road a number of years prior to that. I strongly support uh, an amendment for the bed and breakfast. Uh, I think it's a good idea, a nice touch for the cake. Um, I think they're a low-impact business, and that overnight lodging at a reasonable price is uh, a good thing. I'm sorry, I did forget one thing that was important, and that is that beds and breakfasts would be allowed in the, the BA district, in the two business districts, and the requirements for frontage and things like that wouldn't be applicable in that area. So it would be actually if somebody wanted to have a bed and breakfast in the BA district, which is the... We don't have too many BA districts. The one on, on Route 77, the, the, the good table area, um, and on Shore Road, that would be permissible. Again, they'd have to have site plan review under the business district requirements. Sorry, I didn't say that, and nobody picked it up. And town center, too. Pardon? Town center, too. Oh, and the town center, too. Thank you very much, Tom, and the town center. But the requirements are kind of different than they are for the residential zones. Okay. That said, who else would like to speak? Hello. My name is Lynn Lovett. I live at 31 Broad Cove Road in Cape Elizabeth, where I've lived for 26 years. Um, and I am... I think it would be a wonderful addition to our part of town. Um, the embassy is there. Um, however, it doesn't meet the budget requirements of many people. And I think to have a, um, a bed and breakfast at that location on Crescent View would be wonderful for people like me who have a small home with lots of family who would like to come and stay close by my home. So I'm totally in favor of it and as a near neighbor. And I would like to have you consider an amendment to allow that to happen. Thank you. Anybody else who'd like to speak? Come on up. I just have a question. Say your name. And Carl Dittrich, 500 Ocean House Road, Cape Elizabeth. When the two items are um, sent to the town council, are they going to be linked together, and they either pass together or fail together, or are they two separate things, the homestay and the bed and breakfast? This proposal incorporates both of them. It, 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 we talk about both the homestay and the bed and breakfast, but the requirements for them are quite different. The homestay just has a definition, and if somebody wants to do that, then they No, I guess my question is like, so say the council said, well, we kind of like the homestay, but we don't want the bed and breakfast, and that fails, then they both fail. Not necessarily. Oh, the council the, can do whatever they, they want. Can. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I, I, no, we just make recommendations, oh. that's all. Hey, would anybody else like to speak? Anybody else? My name's Karen Dunphy. I live at 23 Columbus Road, Cape Elizabeth. I've been a resident for 25 years. Um, I just got back from a trip to the other Portland, Portland, Oregon, and I, we stayed in bed and breakfasts for much of our stay. Um, they were in residential neighborhoods. They were lovely, lovely buildings. Um, nowhere did we find any traffic problems, any noise problems, any kind of 
issues that might impact on neighbors. Um, in general, people going to a bed and breakfast are not racing down the street. It's not through traffic, um, their destination traffic. Um, I would urge you to, rather than select two streets for whatever rationale, um, that you, you look at something like uh, limiting the, the density and say you can't have more than, more than one within 200 feet of another one or 500 feet of another one so that they are dispersed more evenly throughout the town but it also gives the opportunity for to people who own property on places like Eastman Road, Mitchell Road, lots of other roads in town that have wonderful properties that would lend themselves to this use and be wonderful and ideal and not intrusive on the neighbors. So I would, that would be my suggestion, because I do think that having them in residential neighborhoods is, is a plus. It really adds to your tax base, which we all know we need. Um, and I, I would really urge you to be creative and look at other ways to limit density than just segregating it to two, separate, two streets. Thank you. Anybody else who'd like to speak? Somebody else was getting up a minute ago. Hi, good evening. My name is Catherine Miller. I'm a resident of Crescent View Avenue. Um, I've been before this board before to talk about this topic, and I want to reiterate some of the points that I made the first time, um, but I promise I'll be brief. Uh, first of all, we hear a lot about bed and breakfast being in residential neighborhoods. When you think about it, what we're hearing is generalizations. I've been to a bed and breakfast. It was in a residential neighborhood. I think bed and breakfast are in residential. I envision bed and breakfast. But what we need to do is we need to look at the hard facts. The towns of Scarborough, Falmouth, Cumberland, and Yarmouth don't have bed and breakfast in residential neighborhoods. These are towns that we often compare ourselves to when we're zoning here. They don't have residential bed and breakfast for a reason. There are some bedroom communities similar to Cape Elizabeth, and the people in the residential neighborhoods moved there to live in a residential neighborhood. Residential neighborhoods should be free from businesses. I realize our zoning, zoning ordinance has exceptions to allow some businesses in residential neighborhoods. However, they're small, non-intrusive businesses that are controlled and serve purposes such as a daycare. I think what we need to do is compare ourselves to the other towns. The town that's most known for bed and breakfast is Freeport. And I think we would agree unilaterally that the town of Freeport is not one that we want to compare ourselves to for zoning. The town of Freeport has a mecca down the center of businesses, and that's certainly not the model Cape Elizabeth is following. So what we have to do is we have to go back to our town comprehensive plan. And what that does is it, it preserves the integrity of our neighborhoods. It lets the residents be a resident. It, it recognizes that there needs to be some economic development, but that's to be in business areas. And I think that the current proposal, it was well thought out. You clearly have gone through many public and private work sessions to arrive at this plan. The plan to keep them on the arterial roads is a good decision. It allows there to be business areas and heavily trafficked areas that don't infringe on the residential neighborhoods. I did a polling of one, residence in, one residential neighborhood in particular and found that with the exception of one person, everyone in our residential neighborhood was opposed to a bed and breakfast being in a residential neighborhood. They don't want them. There's an appropriate place for them, and it's not in our residence. Residential bed and breakfast would result in increased traffic, delivery service, food service, landscaping, garbage removal, increased tourism. We, I did a quick little analysis and said that a six-room bed and breakfast at 70% occupancy would result in 3,200 people a year. Now I have to ask you, do any of you on the board want 3,200 new people coming to the house next door to you? And I suspect not. The current proposal is a good proposal. It keeps the bed and breakfast on the main strip out of our little neighborhoods, and it should be maintained that way. Thank you. Anybody else who'd like to speak pro or con? Uh, very simple. Uh, my Please name is state your name and your address. My name is Mark Pendarvis. I live at 19 Kettle Cove Road, and I also own Kettle Cove Takeout and Dairy Bar. And uh, I've spoken here once before uh, about this. 
and I think it had to do with, at that time, you all were considering houses and, and whether or not um, that home should, could be considered a business. But I'm in favor of bed and breakfast, you know, with limitations. I think we've got a lot of very, not just that place, but I think we have a lot of wonderful old homes right along 77. And I think the idea of developing some type of a uh, plan or a format for that would be really good um, for the town to preserve its, uh, we have a really nice feel to this town. It's, uh, it's got a lot of history to it. And, uh, you know, if it's planned right, I truly believe that a bed and breakfast or bed and breakfasts along Route 77 and some of the older homes, um, historical homes, could be been very beneficial to the town. Um, I don't have a problem with it. I know that there's traffic and so forth. My experience, like I mentioned before, with bed and breakfast has been they're calm places. Uh, you don't have a lot of people that are having wild parties or anything, at least the bed and breakfast I've been in. Um, and they really add a charm to a town. Um, every town I've been in that has uh, planned well and done the zoning properly for bed and breakfast, it enhances the town. It invites people into the town. We already have a lot of people coming into this town anyways, uh, tourist-wise. I mean, just down at my business, every other person doesn't want a hamburger and ice cream cone, wants to know where the lobster shack is or, you know, someplace else. So there's a huge tourist trade here. Uh, and we also have the Inn by the Sea down there. And as a resident here, I, you know, I think it would be nice to have a bed and breakfast, just maybe for proximity-wise. I'm there, but, you know, I have parents that visit, other folks that visit. It'd be nice to have some type of a thing like that to make available to them um, rather than refer them to in by the sea, which none of my relatives could afford at this point. You know, they'd probably stay at, you know, down by governors and so forth. So, um, you know, in a nutshell, I, I, uh, I think it's a good idea if it's done right and planned properly and maintains the charm and the beauty of Cape Elizabeth. Um, so, Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else who would like to speak? I'm going to hang this old poster that's been out for so long, and I haven't had a chance to actually show it. But I don't know if, uh, you have to introduce yourself. And you oh, I apologize. And yes, I thought I was already familiar. Uh, well, it doesn't matter. It has to be for the record. Yes, absolutely. Sean Tamir, 1 Crescent View Avenue in Cape Elizabeth. Um, I'm the one that's kind of uh, leading the, the path to, um, to uh, allow bed and breakfast in our town. Um, Thank you for the opportunity, first of all, to, to really present something to you that I've been uh, wanting to present for so long and have been so passionate about. Um, uh, I have attempted to talk to few of my you know, neighbors and the resident uh, and to present something to them in order to get a little bit of feedback. And from so far from what I got, um, and, and I, I hope this time I'll be allowed to actually make it a little bit more specific to this particular property because... We'll let you do that because we've cut you off sometimes. And, and it's come crumbling down. Let me that Unless anybody else on the board has an objection. I'm sorry? Unless what? I, nobody has an objection. Thank you. Try the hooks on top. The paper this clips? One? Yeah. Yep. Oh, you know what? I will. Uh... Yeah. 
Gotcha. That's a nice high cap way to go. Beauty. Thank you again. Okay. I don't know if um, any other guests here could see this, but um, basically I started saying that I've, I've approached people um, around the neighborhood months and months ago with, with the idea of having a bed and breakfast in town. And, and the, the idea was to create something that would really enhance the town from various, uh, for various reasons. One, the fact that we don't have a bed and breakfast in town, and we will, I think every single one of the 8,000 plus members um, of this community would definitely um, uh, be able to enjoy it. Just by the fact that we're friends and family, at least from my immediate you know, family, that want to come in, and if we don't have enough room to accommodate them, it would be nice to have something, one nice bed and breakfast in town that would be able to accommodate people for two to three to four nights with uh, affordable uh, rates, anything under $200, which, I, which we consider affordable, uh, compared to the in by the sea, which are $400 and up per night. Um, and then the feedback that we got was is enormous. Uh, so between my wife and I that bought this house over about a year and a half ago, and, and I really wanted to actually print some pictures to, to remind people what this property used to look like just about a year and a half ago. It, it, was, a, it, was, it was a complete mess, and that's being sweet about it. Um, we've taken a, a property that really put a damper on everybody else's property in the neighborhood, and we made it look like what it is now as, as part of the continuous effort to make it look really nice and better. and not just improve the interior, but improve the exterior. So we pitched it the first time around to people around, and, and, and there was really good feedback from people saying, yes, there's definitely a need for it, but how are you going to go about it? Well, and then, of course, considering that I'm talking about this particular property, I said, you know, where can we find a better property, a better suited property than what happens to be what I own? But had it been somebody else that would have owned that, that property in town, I would have had the same kind of attitude and, and approach to it. Which is to say, we are currently less than 100 feet away from an arterial road. As you can already know, this is, this is considered a Kettle Cove Road, and so is this. This is considered a Kettle Cove Road. Um, the front of this house for almost two centuries is really actually facing what now is you know, the ice cream shop. Mark's business. Um, and then actually, if you stand right here in front of the house, you can actually see almost like a, a hundred degree view of, of the main road. And we figured, okay, we are, we're pretty close to the main road. We're not way inside a residential zone where it might be, there might be some sort of objection from people around. We have 1.4 acres of land to accommodate, you know, plenty of, of beautiful landscape. We have a three-family, which is a pretty unique situation. So it's not just a single-family property. We have a three-family with over 16 rooms currently being used, utilized as, as a place of residence. And quite frankly, initially, I came up with the idea, well, why don't we have a 24-room within the confine of this particular structure and then do something really nice and elaborate in addition to what we have? And of course, you know, people come up to me with big, big red flags. No, don't go with 24 because you know you will just face immediate opposition. So we crunch numbers to see what would work. You know, what would really work as far as upkeeping this entire monstrosity of property, which you know it's it's going up all every year, from property taxes to energy costs. And we found that 14 within 14 rooms will be able to carry it on. You know, this is not going to produce millions of dollars. But 14 rooms would be something, once again, I don't need to develop anything. I don't need to put another structure up. Um, and it would kind of pay the bills and make a little bit of money for us to really enjoy this property and continue investing in this 1818 surgery. So when we got this great feedback, just by talking, just like I'm talking to you, without being so, you know, I guess, pompous about it because it's, it's our property. But just you know, coming down to the people and say, hey, what do you think? Do you think that there's a need for it? Do you think this property is it? And everyone says, you know, if you look around, what, you know, can you find a property within anywhere around Cape Elizabeth that really fits that description, that is within a transitional zone, since we're already across the street from a commercial property, and you're right by 
actually between two beaches, you know, Crescent Beach and Calico Beach. We have plenty of land to accommodate for it uh, and to accommodate enough rooms within the confine of, of our property. And what about parking? So people say, hey, you know, where are you going to park? And this is what this really pretty much illustrates, you know, that, you know, we have enough parking within the entryway that we already exi they're already existing within the property without creating more cars going anywhere other than what we have right now. So this is just a, a demonstration of how is it that we can have a few cars right here parked in the front and, you know, talking to my neighbors, they were worried about that. You know, are you going to park cars all the way back in your land over here? Which is completely plausible, considering that, yes, I own this land, but I'm willing to listen to what other people have to say and see how is it going to affect them. So when I approach some of my neighbors, they, they're worried, you know, I mean, you know, the noise, the noise factor. And I said, okay, that can be resolved right away. You know, if we keep cars here as we have them already, maybe another car parked here, if we have 14 rooms, one room, one car per room, plus one or two for keepers, for my wife and myself, so 16 cars. So we get plenty of space over here, and one car, maybe two cars here, pretty close to the barn. And, and this is a stretch. I mean, quite frankly, we really don't need this space for parking. What we're going to do with this parking is, is, is really plant a lot of grass and more trees uh, around a, maybe a, a water fountain or something really nice for people to come back there and, and, and enjoy. So the opposition started by, by passing the rumor around that I'm trying to adopt or trying to create a commercial property within a residential zone. And if you recall, any of you that sat here, that I was the first opponent to it. I said, let's not adopt this particular property and cut it in half and say, okay, just because we're across the street from a commercial property, we'll make it a commercial property. Let's just keep it residential because at the end of the day, and the beginning of the day, really all great and even not so great bed and breakfast are always nestled, tucked in little residential properties, residential neighborhoods. And I was trying to make that point because as it stands right now, you, what you're recommending or what you're proposing is let's have it right on main roads, on 77. Um, let's have it on Mitchell Road or Shore Road. And, and I said, okay, if we look at my property, you know, and trying to try to fit it in wherever, wherever the recommended standards would be, and you would really consider this within, let's say, 100 feet from the main road, which we're a little less. I think we're about 79 feet. And we're about maybe approximately about 40 feet across the street from, from the ice cream shop. If you would allow that, if you would consider amending the zoning to allow a property such as this, for instance, 100 feet away from the main road, how many within the entire Cape Elizabeth location would really fall into this category? And we came up with two. And two which are single family homes, with, which I sincerely doubt that, that, that people will convert it. This is a unique situation. It's a unique situation for the fact that it's already a three-family. The rooms are already there. We're not building more. We're not destroying this beautiful structure and putting some cheesy structure instead of that. You've heard time and again that, that, that bed and breakfast really does, does accompany and does invite people of, of different scale. People that would come to Cape Elizabeth to chill out, to get up early in the morning, to smell the coffee, to have a little bit of breakfast and take a walk on the beach. You know, tuck in usually about 8.30 or 9 o'clock at night. This is not a place that would, you know, pose a threat to the community in any way, shape, or form. Not even through traffic. We're talking about a place that hundreds of cars, I think that we're trying to collect data on how many cars in the summer alone uh, go through, just through this triangle, okay, towards the beach. And I can't really give you a number, but quite a few of them, all right? And if you think about it, Considering that we're so close to the main road, we were thinking about, okay, how is it that really 14 rooms with 14 cars would create a nuisance, would create loud noise, would create pollution more than what it is right now? And I tell you, I went off also as far as saying, okay, if there is an opposition to this because of traffic that would travel on this section of the road, which is really my, the first property is mine, I'll be willing to go as far as creating a, a on-ramp, if you will, or an on-site driveway that would go right through on my property.
so people will park here. Just to minimize the hype about, oh, you know what, there's going to be traffic. Secondly, people say, oh, you know, we're worried about you know, school buses and all that. Well, this is, this is a property and, and a suggestion to, to a bed and breakfast that would usually operate just in the summertime when school is out. Um, so, truthfully, we're not going to see any, any situation where people will say, oh, you know, this is really, you know, we are really sacrificing the safety of our children because there's going to be 14 more cars driving by here per day. And quite frankly, if you think about it, when people shake into this hotel, sorry, into bed and breakfast, they're going to park the car and chances are they're not going to move it. They're going to go have dinner at, at Good Table, they're going to go down to Rudy's, they're going to go down to the beach and, and possibly even go up you know, to, uh, to in by the sea and have dinner there. So I don't see, and once again, I'm here to, to get all the criticism you guys would, would like to offer, but I don't see how this is going to create a, a extraordinarily higher number of cars, vehicles, traveling on this road, which would, which would get people to say, this is really risking, you know, my children's safety around here. So right there and then I said, okay, you know, how about if I'll just do a road, make a road right here on my property, which is wide enough, and we can still park over here, okay? So as we see, this is a transitional zone to, you know, which, which really accommodate traffic off the road you know, to, to minimize all the hype or all the, the I guess, the, the risk taking among residents in my neighborhood. Another point that I wanted to bring up is within the confine of the, the laws that allow certain type of businesses already, some pending site plan review, some are not. Within a residential zone, and within this particular area. Boat repair shop is allowed. Daycare, elderly care shop. A cemetery is already allowed. Uh, little clubs are already allowed within the same confine. If you really look at the, this list and you look at this bed and breakfast, you think that this is, wouldn't you say that this is the most residential type of, of establishment you can put in there instead of everything else that could easily go in there with you know, considering that you would go through a site plan review and, and, and find a way to actually accommodate that. Um, so, once again, putting things in perspective is what could be put in there other than that. And where we are coming from is we want to be able to maintain this property, we want to be able to nurture this property, but the costs are enormous. So, we have to find a way that not just serves us, but serves this community as a whole. And that's why we're so passionate about it. It could be something that is fun to do. We're proposing to do something elaborate in the sense that it's going to be of higher quality, that will offer a really ex extraordinary service that would really add pride to this town. And I know that a lot of us here are very proud residents, such as ourselves. And this is not for oneself alone. This is really, this is really a kind of a project to say that, you know, everybody around town would benefit from it. And I would really welcome more criticism, if you will, in, in the opposition of what, what is it that we are proposing. Thank you. So I don't want to take too much more of your time. But. Thank you. Let me be clear that we are proposing nine room maximum, and we have discussed it at some length. Ten rooms is a hotel, and we're not talking about hotels. And I don't think, if I speak for the rest of the board, that any of us are going to consider, after all our discussion, anything different than a maximum of nine rooms. Um, you, you have presented, and we will talk about this. I, I, we're not here to talk about a specific project, but we thank you very much for presenting your case about including your parcel in either the bed and breakfast or in the business district, the BA, because you are a little distance, a few feet from that too. So we will take that into consideration. But thank you very much. Is there anybody else who would like to speak? Yes. Please state your name and address. Uh, up here? Yes, please. My name is Evan Lovata, and I live at 997 Shore Road. 
And I just uh, would like to say that I'm very much in favor of the bed and breakfast ordinance. And my home used to be the Rock Hill Inn from like 1912 to 1955. And uh, I've met an awful lot of people that have fond memories of uh, weddings or uh, events that took place at the Rock Hill Inn. And uh, I know that the old charm of Cape Elizabeth, we lost the, uh, the casino and we, we lost uh, uh, a couple other uh, great old places. Uh, so it would be nice to uh, have the opportunity to bring bed and breakfast back to uh, the town. And I'm very much in favor of it. Maybe someday I'll convert my home again to a bed and breakfast. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to speak? Anybody? It's your last chance. Public hearing is closed. We'll open it up to the board now for any additional discussion or changes in what we've proposed. Anybody have anything they'd like to say? I just have one suggestion because there has been some, because there's some ambiguity in various zoning maps as to the name Ocean House Road and what it applies to. I think our intent here is to include Shore Road and Route 77, and I would propose that the ordinance amendment itself strike Ocean House Road and substitute Route 77, and I think that would appear in uh, a couple of different, two places where I see where we refer to the um, frontage on Shore Road or Route 77 on page four regarding um, the RA, and the similar reference on the RC on page 12, 100 feet on Shore Road or Route 77. Everybody comfortable? I, I want to apologize to the board. You did ask me to do that, and apparently I neglected it. Okay. Other points of discussion, or is everybody fairly comfortable with? Mr. Tamir, this isn't your last opportunity. Come to the, the BA district and make your case for including your property in the BA zone. I uh, have a motion for the board to consider. Right. Be it ordered that based on the materials and the facts presented, the planning board recommends the attached bed and breakfast amendments with the change of the references to Ocean House from Ocean House Road to Route 77 to the Town Council for consideration. A second? A second. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Want to say any more, Peter, so we no. can? <laughs> All right. So be it. Five to one. All right, BA zone uh, wetlands amendment. We've spent a lot of time talking about the, well, let me, the planning board will consider amendments that refocus the business A district as a neighborhood business district, amend the BA district boundaries and reduce the RP1 wetland buffer to 100 feet for properties served by public sewer and water, section 1910-3, amendments to the zoning ordinance. And I'd like to say both here and for people who might be watching, we did have a wetland study completed, and at the next meeting when there will be a public hearing for the BA zones, uh, Maureen is going to bring a big map of the new wetland survey that will show us exactly where the RP1, RP2, and buffers are located on the map. We have taken them into consideration in our discussion, but we want everybody to be able to see them. If you want to see them prior to that, please see Maureen, um, and she'll be glad to show them to you. Okay, um, Maureen, would it be helpful if you just kind of quickly went through the, or does somebody else want to do it? Anybody else want to? Do it? No, I, 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 why don't you, huh? I think it's appropriate for staff to do it. Yeah, yeah I do too. Oh, 
Um, the, the comprehensive plan that was recently adopted by the council had 91 recommendations in it. And uh, one of the first set of recommendations was to, uh, which was sent to the, to the planning board to implement, was to rewrite the business aid district from what is currently, in my opinion, a rather dated generic business zone to something that is clearly a neighborhood business district. So uh, you've taken the, the business aid district, and there are two located in Cape Elizabeth. One is on Shore Road near the South Portland border. The other one is on Route 77, starting about at the intersection of Broad Cove Road and extending down to the Kettle Cove Dairy and Takeout. Uh, the, the amendments that you've proposed for the most part, uh, change the current business district tone to be more of a neighborhood business district. You have, um, and for the interest, I think, of a lot of people, you have uh, enhanced or added to an existing definition of restaurant. Uh, it's not just an establishment where food and drink are served, but it also notes that the sale of alcohol shall not account for less than 50% of total sales, and no more than eight seats at a counter shall be provided. In addition, no seating service or other organized gathering shall be allowed outside at 9 p.m. Um, um, the purpose statement, statement has been changed, so it actually states that this is a neighborhood business district where the business uses are geared to the needs of nearby residents rather than a large-scale regional destination center. Uh, the district shall promote business vitality, pedestrian connectivity, uh, a mix of commercial and housing uses, high quality design that's pedestrian friendly and compatible with the neighborhood, and an efficient use of the land. I think the efficient use of the land, for the most part, is, assumes that the BA district will not be greatly expanded <coughs> at any time in the future. Uh, the permitted uses have been uh, revised to reflect the neighborhood business district concept. Some of the uses that were currently listed, such as the keeping of livestock and timber harvesting, have been uh, deleted. Uh, other uses that are consistent with uh, retail and office, such as uh, a repair garage or a veterinary office, have been added. And they're really matching up more with the definitions that are used in the town center than the generic definitions we currently have. Um, the other, I think, major part of this uh, there's two other pieces. It does also put a limit on um, when establishments may be open. Um, establishments shall not be open to customers between the hours of 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Sunday through Thursday and between the hours of 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. Friday and Saturday. It does provide, however, an opportunity for a business to be open up to three times a calendar year till 1230 at night with written notification to the code officer, and I think that was an anticipation that it was reasonable on the planning board's uh, part that someone might want to be open for New Year's Eve or the big Super Bowl game. Um, so there's some limits there. But again, those openings are indoors. Uh, the, the biggest piece, I think, of changes um, are the design guidelines, which are taking the ideas that are in the town center in terms of requiring buildings to look a certain way and appeal to a pedestrian aesthetic. Uh, that is probably the part of the ordinance that is still a little rough, and I'm hoping by next month you'll have it in a complete digital format, and it will be posted on the website for review prior to the public hearing if you do schedule one next month. So I'm going to stop there unless there are specific questions. I'd also like to say that we have recommended so far, doesn't mean that we're going to approve it, but that the wetland buffer be reduced, the RP1 wetland buffer be reduced from 250 feet to 100 feet in the BA zone along Route 77. The other BA zone is not affected at all, um, provided that a business hooks up to city water and city sewer. After looking at it very carefully, we've decided that the environmental effect is probably positive if they're on city water and sewer rather than on well and septic. So we have made that, rec we, we are proposing that recommendation so far. I mean, we're not recommending to anything yet because we still have to have a public hearing and finalize this. Yes. Excuse me, Barbara, there is one other piece. Um, thank you for mentioning the wetland part. 
but there's also the map amendments and there are two map amendments proposed when when a board reviews district zoning it's very typical to not <coughs> look at the text amendments but to also look at the areas where a district currently exists and whether those lines need to be adjusted so on shore road uh, the planning board right right now has a proposal to increase the BA district by one lot on the land side of Shore Road so that the Shore Road Terra LLC property, um, which the owner has asked to be included in the BA district, that is something the planning board is considering as a recommendation at this time. Um, in the second piece, the BA district on Route 77, uh, the planning board is not proposing to increase the BA district. In fact, there are some uh, residual land areas that are on properties that are used for residential purposes that just happen to be in the business district. Those are owned by K and K Realty and the Chapmans, and their, the residual portions of their lots are proposed to be returned to residential zoning. Mm -hmm. Maureen, could you also just go through the? Uh, sidewalk area and the meandering sidewalk the differences between yes in the in the in the design standards the planning board has talked about well the, the purpose just the purpose statement for this district says there really should be stronger pedestrian connections between the business area and the abutting residential neighborhoods and that's dealt with in two different ways um, on the Shore Road Business A District, there is already the rudimentary, uh, there is already sidewalks there. And they, in many cases, they may need to be upgraded, but they already exist. So on Shore Road, in that area, their, their planning board is endorsing the concept of a more structured sidewalk system. On the Route 77 section of the BA District, the Planning Board is not looking at the same kind of sidewalk system that you might see on Shore Road. They are strongly endorsing a pedestrian pathway connection system that would make it easier for uh, pedestrians who are currently walking to those businesses to be able to get there safely. But the concept is more of a meandering pathway system that does not have a rigid relationship to the road that can kind of move around and it's supposed to be more consistent with the uh, design character of that area, which the best we can come up with is something like a beach or seaside commercial area. Thank you. Anybody have anything else? I just had a, a question about when you formalize some of the sketch drawings that we now have in front of us. They seem to have more specificity with respect to types of landscaping and other things than we find, for example, in the town center provisions that these are modeled on. I find that very helpful, and I hope that we're able to keep it here because I think it helps us to uh, get a sense of what we're trying to accomplish. And I think that's your intention even when you clean up these sketches. Is that right? That, that, yes, that is my intention. Um, the, thing is we're working with some sketches that we borrowed from the town center district and we also have some brand new sketches that have been done and uh, I mean, most of the changes will involve uh, bringing those two technologies together on one digital document and right now they don't exist but we're working on them. Okay. And one specific question, one of the sketches refers to a flat iron building. I'm not exactly sure I know what that means. Is that a term that's sufficiently well understood that we, can, we should be using it here, or do we need to define it? I can work on that. Okay. I, I heard the term, and I interpreted its meaning by the picture I had in front of me, so I can work on that. And just a, a Scrivener issue, a technical, on page 27. Does everybody want to put down their... Pardon me. Maybe on, on page 27, um, this category is 1 through 10, and we only have 9 categories. Thank you. Anybody have anything else Same. in terms of either anything or expansion of an area or subtraction of an area or anything? I had one more comment on these drawings here. We had talked in the workshop about rotating all the drawings so that the roads were either at the top or the bottom, and there's still some inconsistency. That's one of the, I put that under my cleanup. I had okay. every intention of having the road be the foreground and everything else be above that so that you have that perspective of orientation towards the street. Right. 
I have one question, and this is, I think I'm missing some information because I missed one of the workshops where this was worked on. We had very early on talked about having a slightly different definition for bed and breakfast in the business districts with regard to um, allowing a manager that wouldn't necessarily yes. live there. It's in there. It is. Okay. I, I guess I don't know. So, I don't know. Yeah, well, there's a definition of, of, of bed and breakfast. The, the first definition of bed and breakfast. The one that's, that's in the zoning ordinance amendment that we were looking yes, at earlier. Yes, but then when you get to the RA and the RC, then, it, then it's tightened up to include somebody that has to live there. I, I think actually the difference is not that the person has to live there. As I read it, in all cases, the manager must live there. The difference is in the residential districts, the manager who lives there also must own also the property. The owner. That was right. the, it was the ownership, yes. and the, not, the, not right. the residence. So I guess I'm... Um, if I oh, I, I got it. Okay. I see it, in the, I see it in the RA, so it's tightened up there. Yes, it is tightened in up in the Yeah, instead of putting it in the definition, I put it under each the two Owns districts. Maintains. Okay. Anybody have anything else? And then I'm going to throw one more point out. Um, just, Thank you. Just, just one more comment. On the map that's attached to the back, Maureen, um, I'm still confused with regard to the road structures around the Kettle Cove Dairy. Yes. But we were going to relabel those. Yeah, that's another one of those cleanup things. Okay. Thank, Thank you. For that out. While we're there, Mr. Tamir made an impassioned plea. And maybe we need to just throw that out on the table now. And um, I know there was an overwhelming decision not to change the VA district, um, except to reduce part of the area along Route 77. But I throw it out one more time for the board to consider. Do you in any way want to enlarge we, we have this a public point. hearing coming up, right? Yes, we do have a public hearing coming up about That's why I said to Mr. Tamiri needs to come back again. But I'm just simply throwing it out because I'm, we I'm, can make I'm, that decision. I'm not interested in doing that because we haven't heard anything new that would cause me to change my mind. I don't know if anyone else feels that way, but like any public hearing, I'm happy to listen to what everybody from the public says, and maybe that'll help. Anybody else? I, there's no new information that would cause me to change want to revisit that right now. I don't know if people feel differently. Well, I'm just saying if we, you know, just to kind of see what, take a reading of the board at this point. No change. No change. I'd be open to considering it, but I would want to hear more public hearing. I mean, we've had some. Um, Pro and con. We have. Yeah. We've, we've had additional feedback, both in favor and against. Well, some of it has been repetitive from what we've heard before, but we've had some additional letters and some additional feedback in support of um, that property being used for a bed and breakfast that we hadn't heard before and, and a couple of additional against. So I think I'd, I'd be open to it, but I'd like to hear more specifically with regard to that district. And, and we're going to have uh, some public input next month, which may mm -hmm. relate to the addition of the property up on sh Both. Sure, exactly. Right, both. So, so we're redoing the lines. To me, it's all on the table. That's why we have the public hearings. But I, based on what we discussed before, I, I just leave it out there the way it is and take the evidence. Okay. Scott, feel the same way? Agree. Yep. Okay. Well, I'm, I, I'm certainly open to, to adding something. But I guess I, the, my reaction to what has been said, um, if, if we don't change this ordinance, if I were a member of the public, I would be of the view that adding this property is really not on the table. If we really want public feedback on that issue, I think we need to make it clear that we're looking for public feedback because I would assume we don't have to talk about it. So if we, it's not, it's if, not, we as a, if we right. as a board want to put that issue on the table at this stage, I think we need to do it explicitly. Personally, I don't think I'd be in favor of that because I th we've heard a lot of public discussion of that issue already. I think it's really important that we have an ordinance that attempts to balance 
what we have heard, and we have already had some public hearing on this, and an ordinance that we think the planning board, that the town council and the public generally is going to be willing to adopt because we make a lot of important changes. And I'm afraid that if we try to do too much in this initial ordinance amendment, just as I was concerned if we tried to do too much and go too far in the original bed and breakfast amendment, that we will result in no amendment being adopted by the council. And so in my view, I would, I would be a little bit less ambitious and hopefully um, make it more likely that we'll get these ordinance changes ultimately adopted. Anybody else? If nobody minds, I would like to just take a vote. Does anybody mind? Vote on what? Vote on what? To, um, I guess I would like to propose adding that one pro property to the BA district and just take a vote on it. I don't, I don't see how that can be done at this stage, Barbara, honestly. I mean, we well, but we're talking about we can do anything we want to the amendment. Of well, the before we put it out there, and the, the rules are pretty clear, the cha chair can't make motions. And, no, no, I know. I can't and, make and motions. I'm, can. and, and, but we've hashed this out in two different workshop sessions. We had a vote. It was brought up again in the workshop session. I mean, I, I understand Elaine's concern is sort of you assume maybe as a public member, although I wouldn't, but I'm in a different profession, uh, that, that sort of things are the way they are proposed. But I mean, in a public hearing, you can make any change you want to a proposed amendment to, to any kind of law that goes then before the legislative body that's going to make the decision, which is the town council in this case. Uh, but I don't see um, any value at this point if, if, there's, if there's some um, um, notion that in terms of the public notice we put on the table that you know all aspects of the amendment are going to be considered including redrawing the zoning lines um, i'm certainly in favor of as much public notice as possible um, but i don't see i mean how, how do you do that and then not address the issue of the shore road lot I mean, don't we have this specifically well, the shore road lots already included by our vote but meaning we've put that on the table somebody m might say well that's there's no reason to come to that but we could decide that night to take it off the proposed amendment so i'm not sure I, it seems to me you either have to say it for all of the proposals or none of them rather than identifying a specific one i don't think i agree with you but that's okay <laughs> I think that we how do you do separate how do you separately notice out something other than here are the proposed amendments we're having a public hearing that's well right now I'm saying does anybody want to change what we propose about that one property at this point or does everybody feel that that's not something that should be included period I do not and I don't have a motion to make. Okay. well I have a I have a question though and, and it's for Maureen the notices that go out for public hearing for the BA district amendments. Are there any of these that go out with them? I, I can, I'm going to answer that two ways. There are the legal requirements, and the legal requirement is that um, you do not need to send a notice, a first class mailed notice, to every person when you have a text amendment. Okay. Um, when you have a map amendment, you have to send a first class mailed notice to everyone that is the, 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 usually it's a property, that one property plus all of the abutters. Right. My intent for this project, because both BA districts are relatively small, mm -hmm. would be to mail out notices for the property owners in the BA district. And I think we've, in, we've hit the, the abutters to that district as well. That would go beyond the public notice for the text amendment and beyond the public notice for the map amendment. Okay. In addition, you know, what we've been pretty good at is posting information on our website, which would include the map amendments um, prior to the public hearing. Uh, we would do what we can to make sure people know this is happening. You're, you're saying that notices go to the abutters of of the BA districts? What I've done, I've done at least once during this process is mailed a notice to everyone who was in the BA district right. and everyone that was an immediate abutter to the BA district. To the district? To the district itself. Should we go further than that? Should we 
pick a radius or, or setback? No, if, if you want me to do that, I can do that. Um, it's a slippery slope here. It exactly. Is to do that. Well, I know it is. I just asked in the question. Sure, sure. No, that's, and that's assume, fair, Scott. I think we ought to just stick with what the requirements are, the law is, and, and not create. I mean, people, anybody who's interested can look on the website and come and it's see. It's also going to be in the courier. I mean, mm -hmm. we've got a month, almost a month's notice here, so there'll be plenty of time for it to appear in the courier, and I'm sure the other three published newspapers would, would be happy to publish it. So, so am I hearing you want me to stick to just the letter of the ordinance, the notice requirements? Well, but you're, you're telling us, and I'm just trying to understand, Maureen, that you do actually a little bit broader than that. For this project, I would go a little broader. I mean, if you but, were amending Shoreland zoning, I wouldn't because Shoreland zoning covers, you know, a third of the town. Yeah. It's a lot of people. But, you know, you're, you're talking about fewer people, and it, it seems like it's been an issue that a lot of people have been interested in. So, I mean, you're trying to balance cost and legal requirements. So you, you're, and, and what you're saying is the BA zone plus all the abutters. The zone. direct abutters. Direct abutters. I'm, that, I, I'm very that answers my question and, and relieves some concerns. I just wanted to make sure that the abutters to the district know what the changes are we're making. And They'd get a little map. Yeah, the that's what I thought. I've seen that on the, map on, the notice. on the bottom of the notice. And then there would be just a very brief description that we're also changing the text. Okay. So the abutters will know what the changes are. So the lack of the addition of, an, of another property will be obvious by omission or absence, I guess. But they're also seeing the change here. So that's good. I, I'm satisfied with that then. Thank you. Barbara? I would... Um, I'll make the motion that you suggested um, that for purposes of our next meeting and our public hearing that we add to the proposed BA district the lot that is shown as the Tamir lot in order that we can get public comment explicitly on that issue. I'll second it. Discussion? Yeah, I'd like to address it. Um, uh, uh, first, I just want to commend Mr. Tamir for his persistence um, and his passion with respect to his property and thank him for the improvements that he's made to it. Um, I am not in favor of the motion, nor am I in favor of amending the BA district to include the lot. If anything, I would be in favor of a potential amendment to the B&B &B zoning that we've just recommended to include the lot. But since we don't spot zone, it would by necessity have to be a, a certain number of feet away from some arterial connector. However, I think that that is a stretch for what we have agreed already. And it would take a great deal of convincing for me to be in favor of that amendment to the zoning. So I just want to put it out publicly that I am not in favor of including that lot in this BA district. Any more discussion? No, only that we, we had a vote on this already once. And, but, um, no, we didn't. You had a workshop. It wasn't a vote, though. It's functionally the same thing because we're putting, a, we're putting out a final product to the public right now. And the final product that we decided on was that this lot was not going to be added to the BA zone. Oh. Peter, I think um, the, really the final vote is tonight. I mean, if we wanted to change, um, you know, like the wetland thing about whether or not it was served by public water or sewer, we could have chosen one or the other, not both. So I think, I think Barbara actually has a point that we could vote on any of the changes that are in front of us. And if, if the motion is to add the Tamir lot, then I think that's, that's an option we have. Tonight. Tonight. Oh, I agree. We can do that. I'm just saying we've already, we, can, we can make any change we want tonight. We can make any change we want at the pub, after the public hearing before we send it on right. to them. But I'm not, I'm not sure why, I, after we've had that vote already once, why we're revisiting it just for the purpose of getting public input. I, I don't follow that. Because, Peter, after, a, after public hearing, we have the right to change anything we want to. Uh, no question about that. But we, Whether or not at a workshop it was decided to keep something, we can change our minds about things. I agree with that, but the, the, the premise of what you're saying is, well, I want to add it 
just for the purpose of notifying the public that we may add it. I didn't say that. Well, then, then explain it to me, because I don't understand. Because I don't saying. think it's a bad idea to add it. I think that's her point. It I, I think that it is across the street from a commercial okay. property, and it really doesn't bother me if somebody, we've had other people who've come, Carl came to us about the bed and breakfast and caused us so much grief about it. And he was one person. One person came about a windmill. Well, here's somebody who wants to have a bed and breakfast. He's not going to get 14 rooms, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't have any real problem with it. Yeah. I think he made a case. I think it's a good case. And I would vote in favor of it. So whether or not there was a decision made at a workshop that unfortunately I couldn't attend, We've changed our mind before, and all I'm saying is Elaine's made a, a, a motion, and Beth seconded it. Let's just vote on it. it if it, it goes I mean, down, it goes down. If it doesn't, it doesn't. No, I understand, and I'm not. Elaine, your motion is to add it for what purpose? That we're affirmatively adding this zone, this lot, to the BA zone, or are we adding it to the public hearing so that we can discuss, get public input? Explicit request for public input for to, to, oh, to revisit the decision. To me, I think that you have the, the. What I am proposing is that we add to our proposed new BA zone zoning map amendment mm -hmm. that the Tamir lot be included in the BA zone. That's my proposal. If you ask me why I'm making that proposal, mm -hmm. it's because. After all that we've heard about the BA zone and after the compromise that we reached on bed and breakfast in residential zones, I think I very much want public input on this question. Mm -hmm. And I think the only effective way to make sure that all members of the public, pro and con, in fact give us that input is to include that in the proposed amendment. I personally don't know whether after hearing that public input, I will vote in favor or against that particular amendment. But I would like to create the best opportunity to get that public input. Beth, do you still stand with your second? I do. Is there any more discussion? OK, then all in favor of the amendment? Opposed? We've got a deadlock. Which means it doesn't go on. Fails. Mm -hmm. Fails. But that doesn't mean we're not going to take public input on the question. No, um, and Mr. Tamir can do whatever he will with it. And, as, uh, as can the abutters. As can the abutters. So, okay, it, that fails. And then, do we have, did we already have, do we have No, I have a motion for the board yes. to consider. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, the motion to consider be it ordered that based on the materials and facts presented, the BA District Zoning Overhaul Text and Map Amendments be tabled to the October 21st, 2008 meeting of the Planning Board, at which time a public hearing shall be held. Second. I second. All in favor? Okay. Any other discussion? Motion to adjourn. Moved. Second. Second. All in favor. Thank you. Thank you for.